Um, and then the last notice is um, I'm near the end. I'm, there's going to be somebody stood by the door at the end, actually, with the donations basket. So if you'd like to give something towards the running of this service, that would be really good. So thank you very much. So as we start, obviously one of the things that is on many people's hearts is the situation in the Ukraine and across Europe at the moment. So I want, to, I want us to begin in prayer um, for Ukraine and for all of that. So last week I was away at, with, with a few others who are here, we were away at the New Wine Leaders Conference and we heard that Psalm 31 is, is a psalm that the Ukrainians use quite a lot in prayer because it is, I mean, it's an amazing psalm. So what I'd like us to do is to use that psalm to set us, to prompt us to pray. Um, and so if you're comfortable and you're able, if you could stand, please, that would be lovely. And the psalm is, is coming up on the screen. I'm going to read through the psalm. And as I read through that psalm, please use it as like a springboard for your prayers. So pray as you feel prompted. Use those words to kind of to set off your prayer. Or even if you want to, just read it out loud as well, if, if that's what you'd like to do. And what would be just wonderful is if actually you can't hear me speak because our prayers together are so loud. So I would encourage you to pray. So let's join our voices now with those of our brothers and sisters in Ukraine as we pray together. In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Turn your ear to me. Come quickly to my rescue. Be my rock of refuge, a strong fortress to save me. Since you are my rock and my fortress, for the sake of your name, lead and guide me. Keep me free from the trap that is set for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hands I commit my spirit. Deliver me, Lord, my faithful God. I hate those who cling to worthless idols. As for me, I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your love, for you saw my affliction and knew the anguish of my soul. You have not given me into the hands of the enemy, but have set my feet in a spacious place. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbours and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear many whispering, terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, Lord. I say you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies, from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant. Save me in your unfailing love. Let me not be put to shame, Lord, for I have cried out to you. But let the wicked be put to shame and be silent in the realm of the dead. Let their lying lips be silenced. And they speak arrogantly against the righteous. How abundant are the good things that you have stored up for those who fear you, that you bestow in the sight of all on those who take refuge in you. In the shelter of your presence, you hide them from all human intrigues. Praise be to the Lord. 
for he showed me the wonders of his love when I was in a city under siege. In my alarm, I said, I am cut off from your sight. Yet you heard my cry for mercy when I called to you for help. Love the Lord, all his faithful people. The Lord preserves those who are true to him, but the proud he pays back in full. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Amen. Lord, we thank you that we can pray. We may not be able to do much else, but we can pray, knowing that you hear and you answer. And we praise you, Lord, and we love you. Help us now to worship you in spirit and truth, knowing that you hold your world in your hands. Amen. This is a, a new song we've not sung here before. It's an old song to those who come to Cobbs, but it's fairly easy. So. The passion of the purest love has led you to the rugged cross. Where you pay the price for me, you laid aside your majesty. Oh, what love, oh, what grace, your sacrifice has rescued me. And you, you are my saviour. You are my saviour. You're the only one who saves You are worthy of the highest praise And you are my saviour Jesus, everything you are is great My life will never be the same again You are my saviour The death you died The death you died was not the end in victory you rose again exalted to the highest place at god's right hand in majesty you've raised me up you've seated me to where you are in victory and you
of your name. Come on, let's just lift up now. Lift him up in this place. We worship you. We give you glory, Lord. Who is like you? There is no one like you, Lord. You are holy. You are holy, Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy of your praise. Jesus Christ.
Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are here. That when we ask like that, you, you're here. You're here and you are touching every heart. Every heart that is open to you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So if you'd like to take a seat. And Mark, if I could invite you up, that would be lovely. Thanks, guys. I'm just going to pray for Mark, so if you'd like to stretch out a hand, that would be really lovely. Lord, I thank you for your servant, Mark. I thank you for his heart and for his love for you. I pray, Lord, that you will anoint him now as he speaks to to us. I pray that it will be your words through him, reaching out to us and touching our hearts. So transform us, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Oops, well, friends, it's uh, lovely to be with you. Am I on? Can you hear me? Yes? No? Oh, there you go. I'd love to um, just begin by introducing a friend. Um, this is... I'll let you introduce yourself, Elias. Come on. Say hello. Say who you are. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> so I'm Elias Thiessen. I'm doing a Dubai year at St. Paul's Ealing. Right now I'm living in Germany, and uh, but before I lived 10 years in the Ukraine. So uh, Elias, your, your mum and dad are church planters. Yes. And you, so you, you speak Russian, German, Ukrainian, and probably a, other things. A bit of English. A bit of English. <laughs> Sorry to have left that out. Um, uh, but we were talking in the car on the way here. You, you, Elias has come with me. I don't like to go anywhere without bringing somebody with me. And we were just having a chat in the car on the way here. And um, it suddenly occurred to me, your parents planted this church in Ukraine. Tell us what's happening, what's happened to the pastors of that church, and what's going on for them at the moment as a church community. Uh, so the church uh, that my parents planted is probably like half a day away from the Russian border. So they were like in the middle of the happening right from the start, from day one. Um, and uh, so the pastors and his or their wives and kids, they came over to um, Germany right now. So and um, the pastor that took over the church and his wife and his kids, they are staying at our house right now. Uh, so right now, many people from my hometown back in Ukraine, they are trying to escape from the place, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of movement right now there. Yeah. And, the, and, and your church in Germany um, and other German businesses, yeah. uh, what are they doing at the moment? Because they're right on the border, as it were. Yeah, so right now, because uh, Germany, I mean, there's only Poland uh, in between, but it's like one day of driving. Um, so right now, my church and many other business companies, Christian business companies and organizations, they are just packing buses and vehicles with um, groceries and uh, just food and everything that the people need. And then they drive to Ukraine, giving the food to the people that they need and then uh, driving back with the people that are trying to escape from Ukraine. So yeah, it's just two-way transport. So that's, that's fantastic, isn't it? So we, you, know, you often wonder what you're going to do. And Here's a church that is mobilizing and enabling a community to go out to Ukraine with the food they need, pick people up who want to come back and bring them back, and obviously opening their homes to those who need shelter and homes. Yeah. And um, uh, I just thought I, I would just love to begin by praying for this. If you, if you want to give to this sort of thing, it's not, nothing to do with us, but... Um, Tear Fund are sponsoring churches who are on the ground to make this sort of thing happening. It's part of the DC, so if you give via the DC appeal, you can give it via the Tear Fund website. This is what they do. Tear Fund have got a, an office in every town because there's a church in every town. And so they network through the churches to provide help for those who most need it. It's phenomenal. Um, I just said that at St. Paul's this morning. And, People gave about £3,000 this morning just to throw in the pot. But it's, it's, um, it just means we can all do something because we've got to do something, haven't we? And um, we're, it's, we're, we're really privileged to have you with us so we can Thank keep you. up to 
date with it. Well, most of the time, at least. Don't get too strong, strong on that. But, 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 but I'd love us to pray. Can we pray? Can we, can you, could you lead us in your prayer for your parents and for what they're doing and for the church in Ukraine? Could you okay. do that for us and we'll pray with you? Um, I hope you don't mind if I pray in Russian. Great, go um, for it. Okay. Go for it. Дорогой Господь наш, я прихожу к Тебе, я хочу помолиться о церковь в Украине, я хочу помолиться о всех пасторах и о их семьях, о их детях, я хочу да, дать их в Твои руки. Ты видишь сейчас ситуацию, которая в Украине, ты видишь, что там происходит, ты видишь, как много людей страдают, ты видишь, что они нуждаются в Тебе, и что там о многих, которые в Тебя не верят. Вот возьми их в Свои руки и покажи им, что Ты там, а что Ты с ними, и что ты всегда будешь с ними, что ты их будешь защищать, и тоже, что ты им будешь давать сил, что ты им будешь давать хлеб, который им нужен каждый день, и чтобы ты им будешь давать пищу. Я благодарю тебя за всех, которые помогают, я благодарю тебя за церкви, которые в Англии, которые собирают деньги и дают людям, которые нуждаются в этих деньгах. Я благодарю тебя за все организации, которые в Германии, которые собирают деньги, собирают еду, и которые помогают людям, которые в Украине, которые пытаются с оттуда да, уйти и которые пытаются просто обойти эту войну. Пожалуйста, сохрани этих всех людей, давай им силы, давай им все, что им надо. Да. Yeah, I would like to pray for Ukraine. I would like to pray for everything that's going on in there. And I'm so thankful for all the churches that are helping and that uh, for all the churches that are collecting money and just spending or yeah, giving the money to all the organizations that are supporting all the people in the Ukraine. And I'm so thankful for St. Paul's Ealing and for every single church in England that is not just saying, oh yeah, it's just another country, but they are saying, oh yeah, this, these are our brothers and sisters. And please Lord, just bless everyone who is trying to somehow help the people in need because you showed us that we need to help people in need so please give us the strength and just give us sometimes the encouragement to pray for the people and just to yeah, not leave them alone. Amen. 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 My friend, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's um, what great privilege. <laughs> to be able to hear firsthand what's going on, really, because you can hear so much in the news, can't you? And you think, well, what might we be able to do? Um, uh, so um, Debbie's already said, my name's Mark. I've uh, been part of the leadership in New Wine for about 30 years. I, I stood back last year, I think it was last year, um, because uh, uh, we, you know, just trying to enable a new generation of people to rise up. And um, sometimes those of us who are uh, a little north of 50 need to get out of the way so that others can, you know, um, step into things. And, and I, want to, I want to think, actually, I follow on from what Elias was saying, I want to think about our legacy. What's our legacy? What are we leaving? What impact are we having with our lives? So, so our legacy in life, what is it? look like. Archbishop William Temple um, defined evangelism in this way. He said this, to evangelize is to so present Jesus Christ in the power of the Spirit that people come to put their faith in God through him, to accept him as their savior, to serve him as their king in the fellowship of the church. That's a pretty good definition, isn't it? To so present Jesus Christ in the power of the Spirit. And I guess we, we, we sing about it and we, 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 we listen to talks on it. The, the power of the Spirit is at work to you and me on a daily basis. What might we do with that power? What, what difference might we make if we enable the power of the Spirit to fully be at work in our lives. I wonder if you turn to Exodus chapter 3, if you're going to be with me in a Bible. You don't have to turn to it. I'll read it to you anyway. So um, Exodus chapter 3. You know the story well, but let me just read the beginning of it to you. Father, we ask you, bless this word to us, and uh, you would speak to us and encourage us this evening. One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. 
He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? I must go and see it. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you're standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And when Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said to him, I've certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their suffering, so I've come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians, to lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egyptians abuse them. Now go, for I'm sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people out of Egypt. We all know the story well, um, uh, or perhaps I hope we do, but let me just remind you, set the scene for you. Moses is broken. He's been lost in the wilderness for 40 years. He's left his family behind. He's left his community behind. He's moved from living in the palaces of Pharaoh to living in a tent. He's emptied himself of any sense of independence that he might have had growing up. He's ended up looking after somebody else's sheep, somebody who had a privileged upbringing and has lost everything. And here today in this passage, what Moses is doing is he's going about his daily business. He's just looking after the sheep, not different from any other day. I don't think Moses got up that day and thought, today's a day where I'm going to meet with God in a special way. I don't don't think Moses got up that morning and thought, today's the day I've got to look for a burning bush. I don't think he thought that in the morning. I think he just got up and went about his everyday business, looking after his father-in-law's sheep. But when he sees a bush on fire, the bush catches his attention. If we'd seen a bush on fire, it would have caught our attention, wouldn't it? You know that situation on the motorway when you're sitting in a traffic jam and you're thinking, why am I in a traffic jam? And then you look on the other carriageway and you realize it's something on the other carriageway in the other direction and everybody is slowing down to look at it and it's causing... You know that feeling? And you go, boy, you think this is silly. Why don't they look at that? Why do they keep looking at that? And you go past and you go... And we all add to it. Because that's what we do, don't we? Something catches our attention and it draws us to it. Well, it caught Moses' attention and he goes over to see what's going on. I don't think, though, this account has got anything to do with a burning bush. It's got nothing to do with a burning bush. It's got everything to do with God trying to grab Moses' attention. And it got me thinking, because we're not going to see burning bushes around here, are we? Well, you never know. But what if God is trying to grab our attention every day? What if there were a burning bush every day for everybody? What if there were a moment where God's saying, this is where I want you, by the power of the Spirit, to make a difference today. This is where I want you, by the power of the Spirit, to change your every day into an eternal day, so that your day today would be a day where you leave a legacy in somebody else's life. What if today were the day? What if tomorrow were the day? It's so simple, really. It's so simple. I, um, one of my habits um, uh, as, a, as, as a pastor is to use a coffee shop as part of my office. And um, it's called Happy Coffee. 
feels like it's going to be drug related, but it's not. <laughs> it's just nice coffee. And um, I go in there and I, I, I have my coffee and the, 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 they're lovely the way they serve me. They, they come out and they often give me free cookies and things. So I think I'm probably their best customer. So I go in there and I, and I have my coffees and, and here's the thing that you start conversations with people. And you can have a conversation with anybody. And sometimes I try and test myself. I think, right, Mark, you've got 45 seconds to get Jesus in the conversation. <laughs> it's so simple. How are you doing? Doing okay? You got any concerns at the moment? A bit worried about my family. Can I pray for you? Can I offer to pray for you? Can I offer to bring something of God into your life? I don't say that, but can I... Well, we, we, we're struggling with COVID. Can we pray for those people? Well, we're anxious at the moment about work. Can we pray for you? It takes less than a minute to make an everyday conversation an eternal conversation. To so evangelize by the power of the Spirit, Archbishop William Temple says, that people will become followers of Jesus Christ. And this is what happens when they become a follower of Jesus Christ. They then go on to do probably more than we go on to do. And that's what we want, isn't it? We want to pass something on to enable others to do that that's on our heart. And we, we multiply out the possibility of the kingdom of God in our land. So what if God's in the everyday your every day and my every day. The looking after our sheep, the, the going shopping, the going to work, the going to a coffee shop, the tidying up, the driving, the walking, whatever it might be. What if God's in the every day for everybody? What if there are lots of burning bushes? And God's just saying, can I have your attention? W will you listen to my spirit in this day? Will you change your every day into an eternal day? Will you today poten potentially leave a legacy in somebody else's life of something of the Spirit of God? Will you sow a seed? I think the miracle of the burning bush is that Moses paused. I don't think it's anything to do with the bush. I think it's that he paused. He stopped. He realized that his attention was required, and so he paid attention what if our futures could be different because we looked for burning bushes? An event or a moment that changes a day from being a regular day to a day with eternal significance. I was really struck by a prayer of um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, somebody who um, has done so much around the world for good and who uh, spoke so powerfully on reconciliation. And uh, he was somebody who challenged the status quo, somebody who came from very humble beginnings. And his prayer that I saw was this one, and I, I'd love to just read it to you. Because I think he's somebody who allowed the eternal into the everyday, who allowed God to come and do something through him. He was so willing to be used by God. I, 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 he was a bit like Mary, you know, Lord, whatever is your will, do it unto me. He put himself, made himself available. And he prayed this prayer. It's one of his published prayers. I thought it was so powerful. It says this, disturb us, O Lord, when we're too well pleased with ourselves when our dreams have come true because we dream too little, because we sail too close to the shore. Disturb us, O Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we've lost our thirst for the water of life. When having fallen in love with time, we've ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we've allowed our vision of heaven to grow dim. And then he says, stir us, O Lord, 
to dare more boldly, to venture into wider seas where storms show thy mastery and where losing sight of land we might find the stars. In the name of him who pushed back the horizons of our hopes and invites the brave to follow. Amen. It's a great prayer, isn't it? Disturb us, O Lord, and then stir us, O Lord. Grab our attention, God. Don't let us go through the everyday just doing the everyday thing. Forty years of looking after sheep in the wilderness is enough to kill anybody. (laughs) And then, and then God disturbs him. God disturbs Moses. He calls him. And all of a sudden, his every day becomes a day tinged with eternity. And the eternity becomes the driving force for what he sets out to do. What if we allowed God to disturb our lives, to interrupt our lives on a daily basis? What if we stopped throughout the day and paused and said, Lord, what do you have for us today? So many of us set dreams that we can achieve. This is what we do in life, isn't it? Things that we know we can achieve. We set a dream, this is what we're going to do. I once set a dream to buy an old MG and drive a classic car. And I shared the dream of my wife. She was not so keen. (laughs) I've now set the dream. I said, never mind the MG, darling. We'll get rid of that. That's no good. We'll buy a camper van and go touring and camping. She's getting there with that. We're getting there. But the thing is this. The thing is this. It's achievable. What if we set a dream that was not achievable? What if it only became possible if the God of the impossible made it possible? What if our dream was so big that it required the God of the impossible to make the dream possible? What if we dreamt bigger and further and wider for the kingdom of God? Moses, I don't think, ever thought it was possible for a bush to be on fire and not burn up. I suspect he never thought or expected to be the one to lead God's people out of Egypt. Those were things beyond his horizon. They were beyond his expectation. And yet, because he listened when God interrupted his life, the impossible became possible. I don't think Archbishop Desmond Tutu ever thought that he would be helping to lead the charge in bringing down apartheid and leading the Reconciliation Commission in South Africa. And yet, because he allowed God to interrupt his life, that became a possibility. I think burning bushes, this burning bush reveals something really significant to us about God. I think it reveals that God doesn't come in the big thunderous moment. I think it reveals that God doesn't always come in the big miraculous thing that happens. I think often God just comes with a small, quiet voice. It's a calling. And he says, will you? Could you step up for me today? It's when he puts something on our hearts. I love that in this passage, it says, God says, the Lord said, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I've heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I'm aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians, to lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. I've heard the cry of the people, God says. I've come to rescue them. So Moses, you go. That's basically what he says. What, what, what if we've heard the cry of the church in Ukraine and we don't leave it up to the governments, but the church responds? I don't know. It's just a thought. 
What, what if there's something that we could do where we can help people move from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land? Jesus says, I've come that you might have life in all its fullness. I've come in the Old Testament, he says, to lead people out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. I've come that you would know and understand these things. And he requires us to respond. I was just doing a little thing this morning with... um, uh, the, the, the church, St. Paul's Church that I'm uh, privileged to sort of lead in name in, if not in nature and, 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 and I was just saying this morning the mature Christian when they come to church mature Christian when they come to church they're the person that's never saying feed me they're the one that's never saying don't give me deeper teaching they're never saying that They're not saying, feed me, I need more. They're not saying that because they're mature enough to come to church and say, I've come, so I'm going to give to others. Because I've been a Christian for a long time, I'm going to be the one who's going to lead the way in serving others in the things of the kingdom. It didn't get a resounding yes, but that's that's what I was saying because I think that's what it should be like. That's what it should be like. It should be that we, we who have been in the, in the kingdom of God for a longer period of time than others, we're the ones who say, I've come to serve those who I can serve. Show me how I can serve you today, that you might know Jesus more yourself. I've seen the misery of my people in Egypt, he says, Now, Mary, would you go? Bob, would you go? John, would you go? Susan, would you go? Would you go? Who is it that God's calling you to? Who is it that he wants you to step into? What if? What if there's a burning bush moment for all of us? We we as a a church family a few years ago, four years ago it was, um, we had a lovely lady in the church. She came to me. Her name's Jo. And she came to me and she said, Mark, Mark, <laughs> I've got this thing, Mark. There's a growing issue with prostitution in the area, Mark. We've got to do something about it. I said, that's great, Joe. <laughs> yeah, I agree. What are you going to do? She said, no, 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 not me. I said, no, that's the whole point, isn't it? So I went to our PCC. You know, you have to go to the PCC. I said, the PCC. I said, but here's the thing. We've got somebody in the church. I didn't tell them who it was. I said, we've got somebody in the church has had a word from the Lord. I think she's got a calling to help the prostitutes. I hadn't told her I was doing this. I think, I think she's got a calling to help the prostitutes. They said, what do you want us to do about it? I said, I'd love you to offer her a job four days a week for a couple of years. They said, well, where's the job spec? I said, I haven't got one of those yet. Where, where, where's the target she's going to hit? I said, I haven't got one of those yet. Where, where's the person spec? I haven't got one of those yet. Mark, have you thought this through at all? No. No, I haven't thought it through at all. But I think God's in it. And all I'm asking you for is 18 grand a year for a couple of years. They thought for about 30 seconds. And then one of them said, good idea. And they all went, yep, let's pass that next item. We're four years on. Friday night, just gone. I can't remember where I was now. I was somewhere. Oh, I know. I was on my way to Cheltenham. I was on my way to Cheltenham, and, and my wife was next to me, and she was saying, oh, her phone was going bing, 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 bing. I said, what on earth is going on with your phone? And she was on it. She said, it's Joe and all the team of women out with the prostitutes. These are the prayer requests that they're sending in as they engage with them now. And they're out there on a Friday night, The women are out on the streets on a Friday night engaging with the women. And the men are back praying. In their cars, watching, making sure they're safe, but praying for them. And what we're seeing is women brought off the streets. Why? Someone saw a burning bush. She didn't realize it was a burning bush. 
but the burning bush moment led to. So this Christmas, we said this is what God's called us to. It seems that God's given us a ministry in this area. And uh, I phoned up a friend of mine who rescues trafficked women in Burundi. His name's Simon Gilbert. I said, Simon, what are you doing with the trafficked women in Burundi? He says, we're trying to rescue them, Mark. I said, do you have any needs? He says, we need, we need a, a car and we need money. We always need money. He always needs money. So I said, well, what are you going to do with it? He said, 250 pounds rescues a woman off the street. He says, that means we take them, we counsel them, we house them, we retrain them, we equip them as a tailor, we give them a sewing machine, and put them into a new life. 250 quid. I'm like, that's a blooming bargain. <laughs> I said, that's great. And you need a vehicle. He said, yeah. I said, okay, well, we'll what we'll do is we'll do a collection at Christmas because the gods put this on our heart. I said, we'll just do a collection at Christmas and we'll send you something. 50% towards the vehicle and 50% to save the women. He said, oh, he said, that's great. I said, okay. So we just said to the church, this is what we're doing. We didn't, no great shakes. Didn't have to build it up or push it because here's the thing, the Lord's already called us. So I said, we're just doing a little collection for this over Christmas. Do you like to contribute to it? Well, they're not big. Anyway, they gave 23,000, which I think is pretty good. <laughs> but this is the thing, because that's what happens when there's a burning bush moment. When the Spirit of the Lord is in it. You don't have to beat anybody up over it, because people go, yeah, that's what we do. We wreck as no little girl ever dreamt when she was small, oh, I know, I'll be a prostitute. I watched my little four-year-old granddaughter playing weddings. And I think, well, she isn't having those thoughts. And those who have been trafficked didn't have those thoughts. But God's put a burning bush moment in some people's hearts, and that's why those ministries are happening. And just maybe... We're called to get behind them. I could tell you many other stories, but time is running out on me. But I guess I want to ask this evening, what is the Lord calling you to? Has the Lord given you a burning bush? Is there a calling? What might you do? Here's what I want love you to do, is not go home tonight and sleep well. <laughs> I'd love your heart to be disturbed. I'd love you to be asking, Lord, what legacy am I leaving? My friend Jo, she's rescuing women off the streets. I was looking for a stapler at Christmas. All, everybody was in the office, nobody was in the office. I was going around trying, you can never find a blessed stapler, can you? I was looking for a stapler. And um, I, I was going around the drawer, everybody's drawers were locked. <laughs> and I was thinking, how come everybody's got keys to their drawers? I've got no keys to the drawers in my desk. Anyway, I'm going, and I only keep licorice all sorts in mind, really. But anyway, <laughs> we're going around. I'm putting all these drawers, and I'm thinking, oh, and finally I pull a drawer on this desk. I thought, this one's open. That's great. And I looked in it. No word of a lie. Elias will tell you, there's a thousand condoms in it. <laughs> I'm like, how many church office drawers have got a thousand condoms in? I checked with Joe the next day. I said, Joe, do we really need this number? <laughs> she said, we do, Mark. Because the girls have to provide them themselves. Because they're so abused. So we give them freely. With the personal alarms and the mobile phones and everything else that we give that buys them the potential ticket to freedom. And we work with the Metropolitan Police. We don't do it on our own. We do it in a very sensible way. Is there a burning bush for you? What's God calling you to? I'd love to pray a little prayer over us tonight. Would you be prepared to stand with me? Here's my prayer. Disturb us, O oh Lord. Disturb us when we're too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we dream too little, when we sailed 
too close to the shore. Disturb us, O Lord, when with the abundance of things we possess, we've lost our thirst for the water of life. When having fallen in love with time, we cease to dream of eternity. When in our efforts to build a new earth, we've allowed our vision of heaven to grow dim. So stir us, Lord. Stir us to dare more boldly, to venture into wider seas where storms show their mastery and where losing sight of land, our safety, our personal things that we hold on to, we might glimpse the stars of heaven and where our lives might be touched by eternity, and where our legacy might be, that many people will be touched by you. And we pray this prayer to the God Almighty who invites the brave to follow. So Spirit, would you come? Touch our hearts and minds now. Lord, thank you for the example tonight of Elias and his um, parents who've been out planting churches and who've been back rescuing those people who are motivating and encouraging others to send food to support them and to fill their buses and vans and trucks with people and bring them back. Thank you, Lord. What a lovely example of a burning bush moment where they've allowed the Spirit of God to touch their hearts and minds. What a fantastic legacy they're leaving. God, help our, our lives to not be so comfortable that we fail to leave a legacy for others. Stir us, Lord. Stir us and disturb us. I just want to pray a very simple prayer. I'm just going to invite you to respond with an, an arm in the air if you want to. If you are prepared to say, Lord, give me a burning bush moment this week. Disturb me this week. Think before you say yes. But if you want to say, Lord, disturb me this week, that I might be called to something greater than I am, that I might, be, I might step into a place where eternity meets earth and lives are changed. If you want to say yes to that, just raise a hand where you are. Just say yes, Lord. Think before you do it, because when you saw, ask the Lord to do something like that, he does it. And if that's you, Lord, I want to pray now. I want to pray. Your spirit fall. I want to pray that we would have ears that are open to hear you and hearts that are ready to respond to you. I want to pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that your fire would fall in our hearts, that we, the burning bush would catch our sight. We would be, our attention would be drawn to what you're calling us to, whether it's drawn in the media or drawn in our hearts or wherever it might be that we'd be drawn, Lord because we know that you're calling us and you're sending us. We just want to know where, Lord, and how. And when we know where and how, we want to say we are your people and we're ready to respond to see your kingdom come and your will done in greater power in this nation and beyond. And we pray it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who calls us, who calls us to let go of the anchor places and to get out of the boat and to begin to walk on the water where our dreams can only come true if we allow the God of the impossible to make them possible. And we pray it in your precious name, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Debbie, come and um, you do your thing because you're really good. Can I say something? Mm.
You, well, yeah. Oh, I've had a burning bush moment. You've had a burning it, bush moment. And it is happening tomorrow. Wonderful. Okay. And then it's I've happening. I've got one and it's happening tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow? Tomorrow, we're opening that cafe. And the Lord told me, all I need to do is to love people and serve them. Great. And, and you're opening a door at six in the morning. In the morning, in there, we're opening it. Any, and, any, and do you need any more volunteers at no, six I've in the morning? Got, <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've, got, I've got them two beautiful people over there. Which are the beautiful which ones? Which is my brother, <laughs> my brother and my sister, sister-in-law. But I can say to you, anyone in here, I don't know, people who might have just popped up tonight, but it's important to know, God picked me up nine months ago. I was a alcoholic. I was a gambler. He took me out of the pit I was in. He gave me a home. He planted me here. And I own nothing. It all belongs to him. Oh, man. And I love him with all my heart. Isn't that and wonderful? if you do that, you'll have the best life you've ever had. Oh, let's give her a round of applause. What's your name? Jane. Jane. And Father, we want to pray your blessing on that cafe tomorrow morning as it's opened up. And we pray, Lord, that as Jane serves those who come in, that she would serve them well, and that each one she would serve as though she was serving Jesus himself. Bless that work, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. And yeah, just pray, echo that prayer for everybody who's raised their hand. Let's look for those burning bush moments this week. So we're going to just sing another song now in praise of our amazing, awesome God. And then that will be the end of, uh, end of this evening. Thank you.
Excellent. So, just to say, next month we've got Danny Wignall coming to speak to us, I think, on emotional, uh, oh, emotionally healthy spirituality. So that will be really good. That's the 3rd of April. So let's just share the grace now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you all. And don't forget to take your mugs back and put them on the trolleys. And see you all next month. Thank you. Yes.